Hello everyone! I want to show you some books today. I have two embroidery stitch books that I really 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 like and um, that is... Oh no, I see I have three. <laughs> but I use two of them um, for the stitch lexicon and that is Mary Thomas Dictionary of Embroidery Stitches. I bought it recently, I think um, a year ago or so and I did not use it for the first um, rendition of the embroidery stitch lexicon I made um, but now I have this and I can include many more embroidery stitches in the new edition of the stitch lexicon that is coming at some point. Here you can see a little bit inside um, the book. I really like um, the variety of stitches that is included. I find it a bit hard to follow the illustrated instructions sometimes, so I would not recommend this for a beginner. But other than that, it is a very great book to learn more stitches and learn more about the stitches too. And then I have this one. Um, this is in German. I have bought it many years ago when I started my embroidery journey and it's uh, the stitch book by Lucinda Genderton and um, I have seen this book in many different co uh, covers. This is in German but it is also available in French I think, in English of course and I have seen it in Spanish or Portuguese too. So if you would like to um, have one in your own language or in English, um, it is available. The best part of this embroidery book is the overview in the beginning of the book. Here you can see all of the stitches in one place and find um, the pages where they are shown. And the instructions are very clear, I think, and easy to follow. I would recommend this embroidery book to a beginner who wants to learn more embroidery stitches. If you only want to get one embroidery book, then this one is the one to go, I think. There's also an older book um, about embroidery stitches, but with a little bit of another twist, and that is Constance Howard's uh, book of stitches and um, it is different to the um, stitch dictionary types of books that I showed you before and that is because um, Constance um, takes a more um, artful, <laughs> I don't know, um, takes another approach to showing these embroidery stitches. It is more about exploring the variations of each stitch and uh, taking one base stitch or one stitch and uh, doing a couple of different things to it using a thinner embroidery thread and making them bigger or very thick yarn and um, exploring the possibilities to use it in art as well and um, Yes, I like it for that purpose because um, the dictionary types of books um, are more of an introduction, I feel. Uh, like you understand the um, basics and the groundwork of this craft. And uh, books like this one are more for um, going beyond the basics and um, yeah, experimenting. And I'm all for experimenting. So I really like this book, although I have not um, used it as much yet because I'm so busy <laughs> with doing the groundwork for the a stitch lexicon. My fourth um, stitch book that I have is this one. It's The Geometry of Hand Swing by Alabama Chainen or Natalie Chainen. I'm a really big fan of Natalie Chenin, or Chenin, Chenin. Um, and she is just a wonderful person and she has built this really innovative company where she um, creates hand-sewn clothes um, with 
using hand embroidery and hand sewing techniques from um, the past, but really innovating the way the stitches are used and the materials. They are always working on um, jersey, so stretched fabrics, and they make clothes. And she has made a book about uh, the sewing techniques used in um, her clothing brand, but also she has a very rational uh, approach to um, the way embroidery stitches are composed. So um, she has a really interesting um, method, which is, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, she has these grids so that you can uh, use chalk or something um, to go over so that you can trace uh, the single motifs uh, to your fabric before stitching so that they are very accurate. And um, it has helped me understand uh, the geometry of each stitch better. And um, also she's a huge inspiration in the way um, you can use embroidery stitches and combine them with each other uh, to create even more stunning um, things. I think this book is especially interesting if you want to embroider clothes. That's it for the embroidery stitch books. I have two embroidery books that are for historic embroidery and that is one for the 18th century and one for the 19th century and they are both by Gail Marsh. She made pictures of existing garments in uh, museums and um, took the designs they had on the clothes um, to uh, show them here and also some details. Also, there are many anecdotes in there and um, knowledge around the embroidery techniques and the time, um, the context in which uh, certain pieces or embroidery techniques were popular or not so popular. And it is very interesting also um, to learn more about um, the way a seamstress was um, treated or paid. <laughs> Basically what I took from it also was um, that the uh, tools that were used back then are basically still the same as today. And I find it very interesting to see that um, even the more advanced uh, tools have not changed at all. Maybe the materials, so there's much more plastic around here now that wasn't available back then but um, it's still so similar and um, that's somehow crazy to think about that uh, we are using the same things that were used 200 years ago 300 years ago or 400 years ago or even uh, before that and that is very um, yeah, interesting for me. So if you are interested in historic embroidery techniques, I really um, enjoyed uh, looking into these and I have not read all of it, of course, it's a lot, <laughs> a lot of text, um, but they are very um, amusing and interesting to see. The last embroidery uh, book I want to show you is this one. It's the uh, German version of the book. I will link um, the English version, of course, in the description. Um, this book is by Karen Barbie, and it's all about um, finding color palettes for textile design. And Karen Barbie has been a huge inspiration for me for the last, I think, 16 or 15 years. Um, I found her blog many, many years ago. It was right in the beginning of my embroidery journey. And I was so fascinated because she has such a clean um, style and also very colorful and innovative. She often uses um, a stitch that is not 
use that much and make something very modern and practical out of it. Coincidentally, this book, the, English, uh, the German version of this book was published on my birthday. <laughs> so I uh, knew what I um, wanted to have for my birthday, of course. And in this book, you will learn all about color, choosing color, why um, some color combinations work better together than other and um, there are also some embroidery projects and there are also uh, many tips on how to um, choose color for your own project. So this is more of an advanced book. It's not so much a book for people who buy embroidery kits or patterns and don't want to change anything. It's much more for people who um, love to play around with color and um, want to change uh, patterns, for example. And um, yeah, or are designing patterns on their own. And I think that this book is also great if you are doing other crafts too, because this is for textile design. It's not so much just for embroidery. So um, it is focused on, on embroidery. There are only embroidery project, uh, projects in it, but uh, you can use the same techniques to do knitting, to uh, crochet and many other crafts because the color principles and color theory discussed in this book is um, universal. It just, it's not just about textiles. So um, yeah, I really recommend this book too. So uh, these are all of my embroidery books that are interesting, I think, and that are, I can recommend. I think uh, project books have their place, but um, for learning more techniques and embroidery. I think these are really interesting choices and I can recommend them all. 